Well, Vern is a uh, national park in Pennsylvania, just right outside of uh, Reading, and uh, working on a project here. Uh, it's a five-year project, but just in uh, five-week periods. Uh, I'm from Maryland, and uh, here with uh, Travis. Travis, just tell them a little bit about yourself real quick. Uh, my name is Travis Haymaker. I work for the National Park Service and the Historic Preservation Training Center out of Frederick, Maryland. And uh, this is our, a five-week part of a five-year project uh, working on this uh, retaining wall here at Hopewell Furnace. And this, uh, this wall itself, this retaining wall, was originally built for the furnace. So basically, there's a waterway uh, from a stream down there that came through this channel, and the retaining wall was just to basically keep all the debris out of the, out of the channel. So it's basically a small stream here in the bed. The uh, biggest thing I want to kind of talk about is some of the proper building techniques that we're using here uh, at the Hopewell Furnace in order to make this wall project correct. Now, it's been rebuilt in 1939 by the CCC and then also um, in 1984 um, by the uh, Historical Preservation Training Center um, when they first started. Now, they were given orders to put Portland mortar in and also um, aggregate, so someone else had assigned that. The reason they probably did that was because um, chances are the wall was failing uh, and someone felt that the hydraulic pressure of water was pushing the wall out. Um, but most likely, I'm almost thinking myself personally that the wall was a single skinned wall where it was just one uh, batch of stone built up and there was really no back support wall system. And the wall was probably blown out from the CCC period and who knows if it had um, been here uh, from initially when Hopewell was started. So the wall could have been standing for 125 years before the CCC came in. Uh, then after that, pretty much about every 50 years or less, the wall failed. Uh, most of that is because of uh, improper um, walling techniques, which uh, no one was taught. But once again, professional masons put it back together. Did a nice job with the coursework and stuff like that we'll talk about. But real quick, just to kind of pan over here, uh, this is uh, more or less, this is a freestanding wall, same as a retaining wall. Uh, there's a couple different methods of building a, a dry laid stone uh, wall. Uh, the method we're using is a double sided wall where you build a front wall, a back wall, and then you pack in the middle. Now this illustration here has a couple things that are a little bit different, but a couple things to notice here uh, about this uh, structure just designed. Uh, foundation course, uh, we're not doing a foundation course below grade. We're setting our first uh, course of stone, large stone, right on top of the earth, which is traditional. And then um, we don't have many tie stones that are long stones that tie the tie stones tie the two walls together. So when we have them, we put them in halfway. Um, the wall itself is has a batter of a one to six, which means that for every six inches up, the wall comes in an inch. Uh, this wall itself, we checked. I want to put a level up real quick just to give a general idea how that works. It has a one to eight batter. So um, we're also just using the flat caps that we have. So our wall specs are about 30 inches, 28 inches on the bottom on a three foot section and about 16 on the top is what we're shooting for. We're going to go over there and see that in a bit. Uh, a couple other things real quick just at these posters. Uh, organizing the stone, we're going to get into that shortly. But the biggest wall failure of this, um, I believe for the last two times it's been redone, is that the wall itself was what's called um, where they took stones and they laid them uh, length uh, face facing, like they call them tracers more or less. Uh, this right here is a good example of long stones. They're trying to utilize, the masons are trying to utilize all the face, but structurally you always want to have your length coming back into the wall and that's really critical to lock it in with mass. Um, so that's a really important rule. I believe that's really why the um, why this wall has failed. Um, other rules, you know, basically uh, you want to break your joints, just like brickwork, where uh, you're running on the same course and then the stone above it breaks that joint where you don't want to have a bunch of stones with like long running joints. The next important building key here is coursing. Uh, just like um, brickwork, you try to keep everything on the same line and we're going to see that. Uh, and Travis is going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, this is shows some of the tie stones. Tie stones are typically placed halfway up the wall and centered out every three uh, feet or a yard. So that's, that's kind of normal. Last is just a quick checklist. Um, uh, two on one, one over two, it's breaking your joints. Um, long edges into the wall, so you always want to try to make sure you have the long part of the stone going length in. That's really important. Uh, keep your top surfaces level. The reason for that is it makes it easier to put a stone on top of that as you build up. 
Uh, keeping your courses level, well, same thing, it just makes you faster. You want to make sure each stone is nice and solid when you're putting them in the wall. You don't want them rocking. It's always important to always take the time to pack really solid, and we'll go over that too. And last, lastly, step back very often and look and see what you're doing. So let's just walk over here. Um, we can point out a few things. So basically, Travis, you want to come back in and just kind of explain like what, you know, one of the things we were talking about before about the uh, the batter here, how we figured out the batter. Uh, we had referenced the basically the level here at three uh, three feet. Um, so basically, I'll just explain that real quick. And uh, what I did was I just got a quick measurement. So with this, I was doing some measurements at the three foot mark, and you know this spot right here, just making sure the level comes in about. Is nice and level and it basically this is about six inches so level straight the tape at the pink is of uh, my three foot 36 inches up and at that point it's at six inches in so that's uh, just a quick way so more or less uh, you just take your 36 and divide it by the, the six and uh, get a batter so we had just done some rough calculations and pretty much determined throughout the wall it was about a one to eight batter so um, Let's just go down a bit here just to show come up a couple of these other sections uh, why these walls have failed. Uh, this is a great example. You can see right here the stone is really, really narrow and uh, there's not much contact. Another small stone sitting on top of it. Um, so you really got to, you know, once again, try to get that length going back into the wall. You can't have all your stones uh, traced where you have the long length. Um, so most of this wall was traced really and that's why it's failed. Uh, it really looked like when we get over there, you can see where they just piled up a bunch of stone behind it. So nice job for what they did, but uh, structurally, um, it, it really doesn't last. A couple other things to point out, no nos um, And if you want to just come around and get these up front, if you can see these a little better. But uh, a lot of masons often put what's called uh, chinks in. Chink is a cosmetic stone that really does nothing in the wall. It's just a, a visual thing. And uh, that's that's whenever I see a wall with those, it's... The problem is, if, you know, over time we can see them all throughout the ground. They're just they just fall out. Um, same thing. A lot of times masons will sometimes use what's called face pinning, where every stone in the wall should have a job. This stone right here is face pinned, so it's it's taking pressure from this stone. I can't pull it out, so it's not a chink. It's not cosmetic like this one. Uh, that's good. Over time, same thing. The wall can go up and down, and the face pin can fall out. Face pinning is try to be avoided. It should really be put on the on the sides or on the back because they have nowhere to go that back in there. Uh, the other thing that you see throughout this wall, uh, shiners. Uh, stones that kind of come up, grain running up. Um, find a couple better examples. Of course, you know, I mean, clearly that's structurally not really doing any 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 justice to the wall. And uh, find a couple shiners down here. Uh, this is just a plate, you know, something a little bit bigger. Actually, yeah, here's a great example. Our cameraman just pointed out here a shiner. Basically, the grain is running vertical. What can happen over time, water can get in there and cause the stone to fall apart. A lot of shiners really should have just made better choices. You know, this stone should have been right against this stone. Every stone should be making contact with its neighbor. It's really important. Um, so, a couple things uh, with the, uh, you know, with that running joints. This would be a great example. Just, uh, you know, two up running joints is good, but you can see right here, long running joint. Uh, structurally, it's really... It's not locking in. You got to have the wall locking in. Even if it's flexible, it can move, but it's important that to try to avoid three running joints. Uh, it can happen, like this is about two. You know, two's fine. When you start to get to three, you should try to really think about what you're doing. There's also what's called zipper joints where they might stagger a little bit, not as much contact. This, is, this actually isn't too bad, but this right here is a tracer. I mean, you can just tell all these long stones are clearly, there's no way that that stone is a square. A tracer is a rectangle in shape, and they basically utilize the most amount of face. So uh, let's just walk back down to the other section of wall and uh, just kind of go over what we've been doing here. I'm going to drag Travis along. He's a little camera shot. <laughs> right up here with our organization of the stone, when we took the wall apart, we basically tried to uh, really focus on keeping our packing stone close on the outside so it was quick and fast and easy to grab. Contractor buckets are like your best friend to move uh, packing stone around. 
The other thing is um, we try to take all our stones and stand them up vertically. It makes it easier to see. Uh, Liz is over here working on the top wall. Our frames, wooden frames are set up. Let's just uh, walk down the wall a little bit. We also, something to point out here as you're walking down, uh, we do keep a nice two foot space cleared, which is really important for safety reasons. So uh, right here, we've done a couple things. Uh, I like to build with the double string line. And once again, I didn't really mention, but I was brought up here as a uh, instructor for the, uh, the youth group. Uh, part uh, to help them out, but I've given them a lot of tricks and tips to uh, let them see um, Some of the things that I do so the double string lines nice It allows you to just kind of like do a quick glance down when you're looking at the stone and really kind of stay on that line uh, These are our batter frames Another little trick is uh, we just use these little spring clips to keep the string on that's a really nice saver quick time saver But you can kind of see when you look down the wall Travis is up to the capstones here, really have double stones all the way through, front wall, back wall, and then we pack in the middle, uh, and it's important to make sure all that's nice and tight. Uh, so just a great example of a dry laid stone wall, uh, breaking the joints and trying to make sure, you, know, you can see how we're really, every stone just trying to get those lengths in, even the back stones, even though they not, might not be as attractive, we're trying to get the lengths in, which is really important structurally to lock into the wall. Um, Tool-wise, minimum amount of tools, minimum amount of dressing. The more time you spend shaping and uh, hammering, uh, the more waste of time. But sometimes we get to the top stones, it's important. We have a banker table right out here, um, which we've been utilizing to help dress a lot of our stones. It keeps you from being on the ground too much. And uh, just show you that real quick. Put the level down here. So uh, just grab a. So with the with the banker table once again, nice. Nice, fight to sit and work. Um, so a couple different tools, you know, there's a simple trimming hammer here. Brick hammer is pretty, pretty simple, pretty common. Smaller hammers for smaller um, rocks to shape. Uh, this is what's called a, a tracer. This is one tool I use a lot to basically dress stones, uh, take off faces and stuff like that. Um, this, stone, uh, this chisel has a little bit of a, of a point. What, what is this one? Call it again, traffic. A bull nose. A bull nose. Okay, and this one is uh, your pointer. pointer. Yep, and the pointer is used primarily if you have like a high spot on a stone, you would use that to just knock off. Don't want to get into too much of the tools, but that's just a quick rundown of some of the different things. You know, when we get to like the capstones, and some, some sometimes you just need to do a little bit of dressing to make them fit. Um, a waller is what's referred to as someone who picks up stone and just puts it in a wall. A mason, someone who picks up the stone and does a little bit of modifications dresses it so that's the difference between a waller and a uh, and a mason uh, so this is all dry laid stone structure here and uh, if you walk down here we can really see the organization of the stone now this uh, wall was you know back in 84 once again they put together a mortar and uh, it's just a nightmare because now you know it really makes it difficult to disassemble you had to use a heavy piece of equipment in order to break it down. Uh, you can really see in there, when you look at the wall, um, a lot of stones, like, you know, this This is kind of more of a tracer. The long face, uh, really more of a rectangle. You know, when you have a stone that's like square and shaped, that's okay. But for the most part, you want your length. Um, so most of the wall was just dressed. David down here is picking out all the aggregate. And, you know, as we start to move it, it just continues just to, to come out. Earth compacts, makes it really nice. You got aggregate it just keeps keeps on it's like a it's like a wild raging river it just you just can't stop it sometimes but they're organizing the stones so Dave was basically grabbing the contractor bucket pulling out all the small stuff we're keeping that close at hand demo and all this concrete which is part of the job requirements to get this out and then we're organizing our stone we're trying to go through and this is what's really important you got to think about your space when you're working you want to keep a nice open space because before you know it you're out of space um, you know, it's kind of like those people have to go get the storage lockers. Uh, before you know, you have too much stuff. So we want to make sure that when you have a lot of room to spread out your stone, what they're doing here is they're organizing all their stones that would be considered for good front wall stones. And they're probably doing some longer stones, which I see over here, uh, which will be like their um, tie stones. Uh, so these, you know, not as long as we'd, we'd hope for, but this is what we have. This is what we have to work for. We have brought in some new stone. Um, 
just to bring that up, you want to, when you're building something historic, it's important to really, um, really dress. You know, we've, this is some of the newer stone from the area. You can see how red it is. Over time, it's going to change color and really start to look more like the native stone. Um, you know, so that's just a little bit about the project here at Hopewell. I uh, want to thank you again. Rockandwalls.com is my blog. We talk about it, a lot of different types of techniques. If you have any questions, just drop me an email. And, um, and Nick's trying to say something to me. And I'm, YouTube. I'm, YouTube, yep. And the YouTube channel. Travis, I know you're out of the way there. Is there anything else that you feel like we should have added or, or didn't? Um, nothing? No, I think, I think you about covered it. Yeah, so he's camera shy, so we'll just let him slide on that. But thank you again.